Hey, it's Dave from Bullpen Cycles, and this is a trifecta. Huh? Yeah, the BSA Performance Trifecta. I'll explain. And after that, we'll take a survey and see which one I should keep. A trifecta. Back in the day, I thought a trifecta would be having a 650 Triumph Bonneville, a 650 BSA Lightning, and a 750 Commando. And that was in the days before we had eBay, before Craigslist, before Usenet. So, and I walked 10 miles to school in the snow. It was actually a bit harder to find those bikes then. We had Hemmings Motor News. Now it's a lot easier because you can use the computer. So having that trifecta maybe isn't as much as an accomplishment. I was going to do a video on the dual sport trifecta. That would be, in my mind, a Spanish Gas Gas, a Beta, and a Sherco. But somebody bought my Sherco last week, so I don't have that. I don't have a BSA Lightning, so we're going to have to settle for this. The BSA Performance Twins, specifically the Unit Twins. Now BSA made other performance motorcycles which are noteworthy. You have the Rocket Gold Star, which is a pre-unit hot rod. And you have the Gold Star, which is a single cylinder. You have the Rocket 3 Triple. But in terms of twin cylinders, this is it. We are going to compare and contrast each of these bikes because they are all kind of interesting. Very similar, yet very different. This is 66. It's a Hornet. It's a 650, a 500 would be a Wasp. Now I'm told it's not a Magneto, but a capacitor discharge ignition. And you can kind of see some setup down there. That's different than stock. We're gonna take off the seat or one of the side panels and see what it looks like in there. Monoblock. Note, they're not right and left. What do you do with a tickler on the inside? Tachometer. Look at this. It's a kill button. This would be considered the small tank. It's fiberglass. A non-finned valve cover. Now, I think if this had a close ratio transmission, it might have a C. Uh, I see A65H. Oh, look at that. A50C. So, 2244. So A50C, I think is Cyclone, and A65H is Hornet, and I'm told that these early Hornets used the Cyclone frame, but I haven't confirmed that. Folding foot pegs, a bash plate, All that offset hubs and the wasp got silencers by the Spitfire got this waist-high pipe no lights is how they came so then we move to 67 this is the Spitfire it's a road going version here you have the 190 millimeter front brake the Dunlop aluminum 
rims. You still have the non-finned valve cover. The next year you would get a finned valve cover. This would have had Amel GP carburetors. I have a set. Here's what they look like. Everyone took them off to put on concentrics. Still has the small fiberglass tank. Now you got a speedometer, not just a tachometer. Still had the hump seat. We now have the full width front drum brake. Still have folding pegs. Now we go to the 650 Firebird Scrambler. These were made in 68 through 71. The last year having oil in frame. Here you have your finned rocker box cover. Twin, twin leading shoe front brake. Still have folding foot pegs. Concentric carburetors. Still have the small fuel tank, which changed when they went to the oil frame. Back down to steel rims instead of the aluminum Dunlops. There's your twin coil system. Oh, this has got something else in there. Looks like some kind of upgraded ignition system. Oh. Aim of levers with adjusters. Amo levers with adjusters. The more typical one. A65S. Here the number is here, not up there. And it matches. That's different. This is going to be A65F. And there's a number here. A65 FB, A65 FB, followed by a sequence number, which is the same. Frames look the same to me, except for the number stamping. Scrambler. I always wondered. How you don't burn your legs. You've got to wear boots. Okay, they changed the tail light in 68 like the other models. Don't know if those rear shocks are correct. So let's take a look at the ignition system. 
Okay, so here you see this frame is different than the street models because it doesn't have the tabs for the battery box. Here's your coils down here. And looks like two condensers. Look like they've seen better days. Also, my fuel lines are missing. I don't see anything here that would look like a capacitor discharge system. I wonder what that looks like. Let's check under the seat. Dusty but normal. Okay, here is the Spitfire. This is just a charging lead. Here's your tabs for the battery box. This looks like some updated coil. Ah. Gotta love the bungee, huh? So that begs the question, now that we've toured these bikes, which one should I keep? If I'm smart enough to figure out how to do a survey, I'll post it. Otherwise, leave your answer in the comments and I'll let you know what I decide in an upcoming video.